Dementia is really the larger category. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, dementia is uh, any kind of a disease process that affects um, cognition, personality, um, judgment, and it's a progressive, usually a progressive kind of a thing. Alzheimer's is the largest um, type of, it's the most common type of dementia. I see. There are other types like vascular dementia, so mm -hmm. somebody who has a stroke, well, sometimes mm -hmm. you'll see that they have a dementia following that. But Alzheimer's is by far the, the most common, around 90%, give or take. I see. So dementia is really kind of the manifestation of these other things. Does this, and, and, and you're, you, it does dementia, and, and you're telling me dementia is specifically about, we'll call them psychological or kind of motor things, about things around cognition or things around or, or, or emotions and things as opposed to other, other forms of disease that may be more about physical issues, right? Like, although, so. although dementias, including Alzheimer's, it starts in the brain and it does very much in the end affect um, people's physical functioning as well. For, for example? Um, in later stages of the disease, people can forget how to feed themselves um, and I see. really can lose even basic memories of how to even chew and swallow food. I see, in the, in the later stages. Right, but that's further on. Right, and, and so Alzheimer's, but you said that Alzheimer's is estimated to, to cause about 90% of the dementia? Yes. And the others are like vascular disease, vascular or I think I've dementia. heard that Parkinson's may have. Correct. The, the, but they're, yeah. the, those are all like much, much smaller slices mm -hmm. of the disease. Yes. Right. So, you, so there's healthy eating, and then can we just talk, go, now we, I want to go back though, because the, to the extent that Alzheimer's really relates to these issues of dementia, and dementia, are, dementia issues to, to a great extent are psychological related, psychologically related issues. Can you talk about socialization and depression and their interconnection with Alzheimer's? Um, socialization is really important. And um, it's not just family, although family is, is really important. Mm -hmm. It's also staying involved with community. Um, people who stay engaged and active um, and have closer connections are less likely to be depressed. And there also seem to, it seems to be that they have more reserve, um, sort of brain reserve I see. from these interactions. So that's really valuable and it's important to, um, you know, we, we encourage people, you know, even if it's, um, you know, if if it's bad weather, if there's some right. way you can get, we can help you get transportation, get out to a community center, get to an activity. And you can, and you can actually provide some of those services? We can, yeah. Uh, because I know that from, from dealing with a lot of elders, it seems like one of, the, one of the greatest single issues with a lot of elders is that they, they just can't get there. They can't, like, especially a day like, well, I don't want to say a day like today, it's pretty pleasant, right? right. But during the last series of storms that we've had yeah. or afterwards, people just feel totally trapped in their homes. Right, and right? that's not a good place to be. And, well, um, can you describe what kind, what, how that program might work? What kind of transportation resources might be available to um, We actually, there are a number of people that we serve who go to social day programs and adult mm -hmm. day programs. Mm -hmm. um, and... I believe you'll have a guest who'll tell you more about those kinds of programs, but we have, um, what we do is we contract with providers in the area who, mm -hmm. who run these kinds of programs where there are activities during the day, um, there's, um, you know, there's a, a good meal, sometimes medication, you know, people um, taking care of your medications yep. for you, and yep. we can provide for, in some cases, transportation to and from. I see. Yeah. I see. And now, he, this is really for an Ashland audience. This is Ashland Cable. So, is there, if you were living in Ashland, um, would there be a program like that that would be convenient to Ashland? That would, or what would be the? I'm sure there are some. What would be the closest program? 
or do you, are you aware of any at the Council on Aging? They seem to have such a dynamic Council on Aging here. It's a wonderful senior center. Um, there, there are exercise and dance programs. There, I mean, there are all kinds of wonderful programs at the senior center, and um, there is also um, there for social day programs or uh, adult day health programs. There is mm -hmm. one um, right in Framingham, which is pretty close by. And what is that called? That's um, Windsor House Adult Windsor Day House. Center. And there are others in the area, but that's probably the closest to Ashland. And, and the reason why I mention that, folks, is that that may be the kind of place that at some point you'd actually want to see. Or if you've got a person that is, if you, if you, you or a friend really wants to be involved in something like that, you should go see them. Uh, I really, really want to thank you for coming today. It's, I think it's been very informative for me, hopefully informative for a lot of these folks. As you mentioned in our second, the second piece of this program, we're going to talk to somebody who does an adult day program so we can talk more about how, you know, what kinds of folks are there and the programs that are offered. This is really helpful. I guarantee you're going to be back. Look forward uh, to it. And I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hi, welcome back. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, this is the first of what we think will be a, a fairly a whole set of shows dealing with various aspects of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, what those are, uh, how you can try to prevent them, if you, if you have them, how you deal with them, what the, what the asset planning issues are, what the personal planning issues are, a whole variety of issues. Um, in the second half, I have invited Tammy Pazaricki. Um, Tammy, you're going to have to start by spelling that. But Tammy Pazaricki <laughs> runs a, a really wonderful, uh, uh, well, actually, Tammy's going to describe the program that she has uh, in Marlboro. I've worked with Tammy for many years. Tammy, thank you very much for being on our first show. Yeah, thank you. So, so to start off, tell me about you and tell me about what the program that you run. Tell me about Pleasantries. I run Pleasantries Adult Day Services in Marlboro, and it's a home-based social model adult day program focusing primarily on memory impairment due mm -hmm. to dementia, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. um, however, we, we tend to get folks some with memory impairment, some without. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it has to do with folks being isolated and depressed in their home and mm -hmm. needing to get out. But it's run in a home environment. And when you, I was going to say, when you, when you say you run a social model, that, that must mean something. A social model as a, in, in, in how many people, how many guests it's, can you it's have? It's 10 to comment? 14 guests 10 every to 14. day. And th this is not an overnight residential facility. These are just people who are coming for the day. That's right. And, and, what is, and what does social model mean? Well, with adult day services, mm -hmm. there's adult day health, which mm -hmm. most people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, that is actually a governed agency. Um, Department of Public Health is involved. Medicaid can fund that. Mm -hmm. And medical model, meaning hands-on nursing care, medication administration, showering, bathing, I where see. a social model is more of a supportive day program where we provide the environment that's safe for them, that um, enhances their abilities, their independence, and gives them that socialization, but we do not provide hands-on care. So there's not nursing staff. It's I see. I see. So, so the whole medical piece of dealing with folks. Right. It, it separates there. the people with um, any type of Alzheimer's or yeah. dementia for yeah. earlier stages yeah. and then when the disease progresses and they have a bigger need where they will need the hands-on care oftentimes will guide them to an adult day health, the medical model. I see. So the folks that you are seeing, I think it would be fair to say, the folks that you see are mainly people who have early symptoms of Alzheimer's because they are early dementia symptoms. Correct. And, and I think one of the reasons why I asked you to come on was I know in the first, in the first segment um, we really were focusing on if to, the things that you can do to kind of prevent dementia or to prevent Alzheimer's and other things that cause dementia from happening because it's everybody's dread, just everyone's dread. But the question now is suppose First of all, how can you spot the fact that something may be happening? 
that, that as opposed to just your average kind of, I'm getting older and I can't remember where the keys are all the time, that I, you know, I may really have, I really may be exhibiting symptoms or my husband or my mother or my father may be exhibiting symptoms that may, may make me want to go look at this more closely. What, well, what, what, how can you spot that? The, the one important thing to remember and mm -hmm. to, is to not panic because there are a lot of treatable disease process or, or symptoms mm -hmm. that may look like dementia, but in fact it might be a um, medication side effect. It might be a vitamin deficiency. Yep. It might be simply depression that's going untreated and looks like a manifestation of dementia. So the most important thing is to go to the doctor with any concerns. You mm -hmm. know, if you find that the memory issue, you're forgetting where you're putting the keys, but you're, yeah. you know, where the memory, if the memory becomes where you feel it's disrupting your daily life, mm -hmm. that's something to be concerned about. But the important thing is to go and talk with the doctor and get a neurological workup have some tests done and run and to kind of know exactly what you're dealing with.